What's up shooters, welcome back. Today we have something pretty cool. This is the Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56 that just came out and I am absolutely amazed with this scope. For a price point under $800, it is jam packed full of features. For folks looking for long range shooting, EOR or even competition, you don't wanna pass this scope up. Now a scope as good as this, you don't wanna be using cheap scope mounts. So we're gonna be using the F3R machine, which are made in the USA. These are very rugged scope mounts, as you can tell, and they pair up with this scope very nice. So there's a lot of great reviews out there that go over the specs and details of optics. However, they don't really show you guys how to use this thing. So big shout out to Tacticam. We're gonna be using the FTS 5.0, looking downrange through the optic. I'm gonna show you guys how this thing performs, how well it looks at long range, thousand yards and a mile. If you guys are interested, stick around. You're gonna like this one. Well, first off, this scope is beautifully packed on a nice presentation box, showing off the optic. To make it short and simple, included is the instructions, an aluminum throw lever, a CR2032 battery, a rev stop system, a pendant, the scope and sunshade, and also a cleaning cloth. Torquing down the scope base is pretty self-explanatory. This F3R machine scope mounts actually have a locking lug that sits inside between the gaps of the Picatinny rail. So when you're mounting this scope base, you want to make sure you slide it forward and engage that lug. When torquing down these scope bases, you want to use a cross tighten sequence and tighten them down to 30 inch pounds. This scope has approximately three and a half to four inches of eye relief. So getting behind the cleared rifle and situating yourself Looking down the objective, you should be able to see that reticle pretty clear without any kind of fuzziness. After setting your scope caps on finger tight, we want to go ahead and level out the rifle. So using your line level or a bubble level, set it flat on the Picatinny rail and level it out. So this is where a lead sled comes in handy. Those little feet give you minute adjustments to get that level just perfect. Now behind the rifle, we're going to set up on the wall a laser level. If you don't have one of these, a simple plumb bob will work just fine. The method we're going to use today is the flashlight method. So getting a nice bright flashlight and situating the focus, shine it down the front of the objective and you should see it project on the wall. At first, the reticle will look pretty fuzzy against the wall until you adjust the eyepiece. Similar to a projector, shining the flashlight down the exit glass and focusing the eyepiece back in it outwards will actually sharpen the image up. Once focused in, you can move the lead sled and get that reticle close to the vertical line being careful not to move the rifle and bump off the horizontal bubble level. At this point, it's just a matter of turning the scope to match that vertical laser level. So Vortex Optic actually has a sticker on the scope that warns you not to exceed 18 inch pounds on the scope caps. With that said, we're gonna keep in mind and triple check our level before torquing these down. Using a cross tightening method, as stated, we torque these things down to 18 inch pounds. So this optic is jam packed full of features one of them being lockable turrets with very audible clicks. The windage turret is also lockable and it's highly visible either left or right on your windage. Now for the parallax, it adjusts all the way down from 15 yards all the way up to 500 and of course infinity. And to the right of it is your illumination reticle. This scope being an MOA, it's advertised to have a max elevation of 110 minutes of arc. In fact, I was able to count 115 on this reticle. Setting zero on this scope is very simple. Given the adjustment pended, all you have to do is back out the screw just enough to lift up the turret and spin it back to zero. Find the notch, lock it down, then tighten the screw, and you're done. The windage turret is set the same way. Basically back out the screw just enough to lift up the turret and then spin it back to zero. So this scope actually does come with a zero stop. It's a rev stop system, but basically what it is, is a removable spacer. Installing the rev stop system is actually pretty simple. Removing the top elevation turret, insert the rev stop system, lock it down, and then spin it until it stops. Then reinstall your turret cap back to zero. So looking at the adjustment marks, they actually line up very well but there is a very slight mushiness. It's very hard to kind of notice, but it is noticeable compared to higher end optics. There also is a second elevation adjustment bar that's bracketed in parentheses. This makes it very useful. That way you don't have to do math in your head if you're trying to make long range impacts. So with the rev stop system installed, Vortex did state that the rev stop will actually decrease your total max elevation. With this scope set up on a 20 MOA base, I had roughly 85 minutes of angle. 
After installing the rev stop, I'm only able to get around 47. So for most competition shooters that are needing a zero stop, this really wouldn't really affect them as much. But for long distance shooters needing that total max elevation to make that impact, well, you're going to lose some elevation adjustment. So with a 34 millimeter tube and that much elevation adjustment, what that enables me to do is pretty much zero out my reticle even at a mile. With downrange here at 1,780 yards, just a little bit past a mile, with this optic, I have roughly 80 minutes of adjustment after setting my zero at 100 yards. So let's take a couple shots, see if I can get on target at one mile. And I do have the Tacticam going. Give you guys uh, a view down the scope of what it looks like at this range. And I am actually at 20x power. Um, I can cycle through all the way from, let's see, who's back it out to, let's see, six power. So even at six power, I can see that target fairly clear down this reticle. Uh, personally, I like shooting at 16 to 20x uh, max, uh, 20 power max. So this scope is definitely working very well, very clear at this range. Good. And I'm gonna favor the, let see a cold round, a cold bore shot. I'm gonna favor the top right edge here. Looks like uh, this top of the target there. I'm gonna come up another four and hold uh, basically four minutes of angle over. I think that was an impact. Hard to tell at this distance. We'll do that same hold. That was the third shot. Okay, so I held two and using the reticle, I hit just below the target there, if you guys can saw that. So three uh, minutes of angle, hold over, should put me right on the target. Windage was perfect. All right, just below the target there. That was an impact for sure. Awesome. So here at a mile, this reticle is doing phenomenal. I am actually really, really stoked and really impressed with the clarity uh, here in ELR distances, basically for this cartridge. So knowing your rifle subtensions is very important to be effective on making your impacts. So here at 1,000 yards, I re-zeroed my rifle to 100 yards and we're going to be doing some holdovers. According to Sturlock, with my bullet and velocity, I should be holding over roughly 30 minutes of angle. Uh, this is exactly what it looks like and to my liking, that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to dial it back down to 16. This being a first focal plane scope, the reticle adjust with the magnification. This is uh, six power here, 
8, 10, 12, 14, and then 16, 20, 25. So definitely there's a huge range of magnification. Obviously, uh, when you zoom in, you're going to be zooming in on all the effects downrange, and that includes the Mirage. So I technically like to shoot around 14 to 16x. We'll dial back down to, let's do 14. And hold over at 30 MOA. And as you can tell, that was an impact. Okay, so as you can tell, knowing your subtensions and your reticle, you can be very effective even out to a thousand yards just doing holdovers. So what this means is for you precision shooters or PRS shooters in competition, knowing your dope will get you on target just by using the reticle. No need to dial up. That means faster shots and a faster time. Well folks, here's the view downrange at 1,000 yards. I want to give you guys a clear view starting from 6 power all the way up to 25. So the optical clarity is very spot on. Now it is hard to kind of show you guys filming through my camera. But hopefully you guys can see that even at 25 power you can really see your impacts at 1000 yards on the 24 by 24 target. So folks, my overall impression of the Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56 is a 9 out of 10. The only downside to it, I think, is the ref stop system. Uh, they said that it only takes out a little bit of uh, elevation adjustment. Um, it actually takes out quite a few. So instead of having 113 minutes of elevation on this optic that I have, I was only able to get around 48 with the ref stop. So that is the only downside I can say with this optic. But if you're only shooting out to a thousand yards or you're just trying to use it for competition, the rev stop system is definitely awesome to have. Now with a 36 millimeter tube and 56 millimeter objective with the sunshade, it is still gathering quite a bit of light. I think this is one of the advantages over the PST. You're able to have a actual wider field of view over the PST and at low light conditions, this thing will definitely perform better. Now going over the glass clarity, comparing this to the PST, Diamondback and Razor HD, I could definitely say that the glass clarity, even though it's hard to kind of show you guys through a camera or through my phone, it is definitely better than the Diamondback, and I don't see much differences between the actual PST and this optic. Now another benefit I think that this optic has over the PST is the fact that it has locking turrets. If you guys are in competition, you know it's pretty easy with those exposed turrets to knock out your zero and mess up your shots. So having a locking turret is a big, awesome upgrade over the PST, I think. Now, I forgot to say that this scope does come with uh, caps for your objectives to make sure that your lenses don't get all dirty. And it also does come with a throw lever, and it's very easy to manipulate your magnification. Um, that's an awesome upgrade that Vortex uh, puts out. And also, the eyepiece is very easy to manipulate, uh, very solid. It uh, doesn't seem to want to get out of focus. So setting your eye relief... Uh, fairly easy and it's not too stiff now there's a lot of companies out there that offer great scopes however the customer service is subpar having a good scope doesn't mean nothing unless you have great customer service and if you guys know vortex vortex has great awesome customer service now if you guys are wondering what scope base i'm using for this scope i am using the f3r machine scope base it is a usa based company out of horkin wisconsin and they make Awesome scope bases, very precision CNC cut. There is no need to lap. And as you can tell, it's a beefy scope mount that holds this thing solid. So if you guys are looking for a solid scope base that won't break the bank, definitely check out F3R Machine. And it worked very well for this optic today. So speaking of price point, these scopes go for about $800. You can find them on sale for under $700. If you guys use OpticsPlanet.com and use the code EAGLEEYE, that will save you 5% on your checkout. 
and that's actually 35 bucks right now if you guys were to purchase this scope so if you guys are looking to buy this scope over the pst don't hesitate save yourself some money and if you use the code eagle eye that's 35 bucks off and it helps me out greatly well folks that's all i got for now i hope that this review helps you guys out decide whether this vortex strike eagle will work for you as always stay safe i'll catch you on the next video check that out two impacts at 1800 yards with that 280 remington first time ever taking that thing out to some real distances and uh that didn't do bad at all i think i got it within the first five shots i hopefully i have to review the footage but not bad not bad <laughs>